The time has come to send your child off into the world or off to college. You've celebrated all the laughs that come with graduation, but now what? You've spent so much time and energy being their mother that you're not sure what this empty nest season is supposed to look like. I get it. I've been a college temporary empty nester since 2019 and a full-time empty nester since the beginning of 2024 when my youngest daughter moved to her adult apartment. And I'm gonna share in today's video some tips for navigating this emotional but exciting empty nest season. I know this transition can be tough. After years of being on autopilot as a parent, suddenly your role changes and it can seem a little overwhelming. It's okay to feel a sense of pride, maybe some sadness, anxiety, and a little excitement. You're not alone and I'm here to help you through it. First off, trust in your preparation. You've worked hard to teach them and prepare them for this time in their life. Now trust them to do it. Of course they're gonna make mistakes, but that's how they'll learn. Just think back to how much you knew when you first left home. Probably not as much as our kids in this day and age do, so they're gonna be okay. Now this is important, listen to me on this one. Your role is changing. You're going from highly involved parent to slowly just the trusted advisor. Now if you're paying the bills, you can set some boundaries, but you still need to let those all those adult responsibilities fall to your child. That's the way they step up and become a full functioning, thriving adult. Trust that you did a good job in preparing them and then be ready to give advice only when asked. And as you're transitioning to this new season, also stay connected with them. If you're a Gen Xer like me, you know once we left home, we didn't have this constant communication with our parents. I had a calling card that I was supposed to call on Sunday nights, and that's really the only time I talked to my parents. The rest of the week, I was on my own. So remember that freedom that you got to have. Remember to show that to your kids. Don't expect that constant communication that you had when they were living at home. Let them a little bit more freedom. Let them set the pace. Maybe they like texting. Go with that. Maybe phone calls every now and then. Our family has a Snapchat that's kind of a easy, low touch way to stay in touch. Ask your child how they want to stay in touch and then follow their lead. And here's the best secret of all from this. When you do this right and you don't step on their toes, those kids come back and want to spend time with you. And let me tell you, adult kids are so much fun. It was a lot different when I was the one leaving home and going off to school. It was a lot more exciting, things to look forward to, a little bit more freedom. But being on the flip side of being the mom that gets left behind, it was a lot harder. When my oldest Taylor left, I was so upset, but at least I had my younger two just keep me busy and I, we found a new rhythm. We were so excited when Taylor would come back. And then when the second one, Lauren left to go to school, she roomed with my oldest daughter Taylor so I'd get to go see them, but Caitlin was still at home keeping me busy but I knew I had to have a game plan for when Caitlin left and eventually when they all graduated and started their adult life. I had to figure out who I was when I wasn't their mother. One fun way I prepared myself for this final countdown where Caitlin was leaving for college, I knew the house was gonna be super quiet when they all left. And so luckily, Brady and I were able to plan a trip to Hawaii. So when the girls left to go to college, we left for the airport. We spent a week in Hawaii embracing this new season, celebrating what we had accomplished, getting them launched into college, but also reconnecting with who we were as a couple and who we were individually. It gave me something to look forward to, not just dreading that Caitlin was leaving for school and that stage of motherhood was over. This was like a celebration of all the hard work we'd done as parents and starting this new chapter with fun. You don't have to take a big vacation, but I do think you should plan something fun just for you in this new season of empty nesting. It'll take a little bit of the sting away from this quiet house and give you something to look forward to. Your kids are super excited about this next chapter and I want you to be too, you deserve it. Now to piggyback off of that tip, I want you to start thinking about what sounds fun. 
you're gonna have a lot more time on your hands now that you're not running carpool, going to booster club meetings, going to all the extracurricular activities and staying up late waiting for them to get home. You have a lot of extra time. So how are you gonna fill it? And I hope you don't say sitting on the recliner watching Netflix and scrolling to see what your kids are posting on social media. Instead, I want you to find things that sound fun. Remember before we became moms, what sounded fun to us? What, how do we fill our time? Maybe it's joining a, some kind of sports league, like a pickleball league or a tennis league, or maybe it's taking classes at your local parks and rec, something that sounds fun to you. Or maybe it's an old hobby that you now have time to dust it off and bring it back. Playing an instrument, doing watercolors. What sounds fun? And what would you like to learn? This is your time to spend a little extracurricular activity on yourself. Create your own exciting life. You still want to be the example for your kids of what's to come. And what better way than to show them how fun it is to be an adult. So I would love to know what sounds fun to you as an empty nester. Tell me in the comments. Let's build a list so we can get ideas from each other. It doesn't seem fair that right as we launch our kids into their next season, we've spent all our time and effort on raising good people that our bodies start to fail us. That transition to menopause starts to happen and we don't feel at home in our own bodies. So this next tip is super important and it's to take care of yourself. You've put your health on the back burner. I got a huge wake up call on this several years before my youngest daughter graduated from high school. Perimenopause had reared its ugly head. I just didn't realize it. I was feeling like crap exhausted, overweight, and didn't know what was going on. But I knew why I wanted to prepare for the empty nest and have the energy for fun. So I had to dial in on my health. And as I slowly but surely did that, I felt better and I was fully ready once Caitlin left for school for me to start my next chapter. Now it's time to prioritize scheduling in those workouts. And that can be a fun thing. Join a gym where there's classes and you get to make new friends or Join some kind of pickleball league. Find ways to incorporate that exercise that's fun and you'll be more likely to get it done. And you've probably spent more than your fair share in the drive-through as you are raising those teenagers. Now it's time to up-level that food. That food can make such a difference in fueling your body or fueling your disease. So we wanna make sure you're getting good, whole nutrient dense foods instead of going for the chicken nuggets and the macaroni and cheese. And then one of my favorite benefits of being an empty nester is I can go to bed whenever I want to. I don't have to wait up late for them to come home. So the best way to get more sleep is actually to start earlier. Go to bed on an earlier schedule and get more sleep ahead of midnight and you'll rest better. You'll wake up more refreshed and your sleep, you won't have to hit that snooze anymore. And then finally, that self-care. Go for a walk in nature, spend time outside, do some deep breathing, prayer or journaling to lower that stress. Because even though the kids are out of the house, at this time of life, our cortisol or that stress hormone is on its way up. So you've got to do your part to manage that and lower that stress. Now, if you need help with this, this is where I come in. I'd love to help you manage some of this healthy lifestyle habits. See the caption below for some free resources. And if you wanna book a call, I'd be happy to talk with you. Your kids are off making new friends, building their social network, going out and having fun. So why shouldn't you? Now is the time to build new friendships. And it is a little challenging because probably your friends have been the parents of your kids' friends. You've sat next to them in games, spent time volunteering at the school with them. So once that network goes away, it's time to find new ways to build those friendships. You have time to date your husband. You have time to meet girlfriends for dinner that you maybe hadn't had in the past when the kids were at home. Build up your social network and fill your social calendar. My husband, Brady, and I love to say, you know, we can do whatever we want. Sometimes that means being in bed by nine, and sometimes that means going to a movie on a weeknight. Enjoy this newfound freedom, both as a couple or building those friendships and really find 
the new rhythm of what this empty nest season will look like. But most of all, trust yourself. You've done an amazing job raising kids, but now it's your turn. Celebrate your success as a parent and then get excited about this next chapter for you too. And if you're still not sure of who you are going to be in this next chapter, then watch this video here where I talk about giving yourself permission to redefine who you are. I'd love to know what you look forward to or that you love about being an empty nester.